Hello everybody and welcome to episode 0 of Long War 2 Season 3 version 1.3. 1.3 is not quite out yet. It hasn't quite hit. I want to just go over a quick overview of the mods that we're going to be running and a quick rundown of a few of the config changes I'm going to be making before we get into this. The mod list will be in the description of every video as it has been in the past with my uh, Long War 2 games, but uh, I just want to go over them real quick. Black market usage, standard mod, it shows what uh, items are used for in the black market. Stop wasting my time, um, just gets rid of a few of the slowdowns that happen in uh, XCOM 2. I recommend everybody play it no matter what, even if you want a vanilla gameplay. Captain Bugs, ex Bub's accessory pack, everybody knows it, it just adds more uh, cosmetic things to your dudes, not gameplay at all. Additional icons, uh, gives you all of the extra indicators around the people's um, uh, 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 HP bars in in tactical gameplay. So the thing that shows the numerical display of their HP, the thing that shows what their aim is, what their movement is. You have access to all of this information in game yourself, uh, so it's not gameplay changing, it just puts it in a much better place in my opinion. Instant Avenger menu, menus uh, just speeds up Avenger gameplay. Um, doesn't have all of the like animations and stuff, uh, in my opinion also necessary. Perfect information. Uh, gives you information on when enemies shoot you, what percentage they had, what their mischance was. Um, gives you information on hacks, on what the hack is going to be before you actually go out on it. Which isn't gameplay changing because you could just go for the hack anyway and you would see it. It is, uh, I would say, perfect information is barely gameplay changing. Um, it doesn't actually change any of the shots or anything, but it does give you a better feel for what the enemy's chance to hit you and all that is that you would not normally have. Uh, evac all just lets you press one button to evac everybody in the evac zone. True concealment for long war 2. Major gameplay changing mod. True concealment for long war 2 is true concealment. The timer will not start running until we are revealed. I am going to continue with playing with true concealment. Um, they've made some changes to the way reinforcements work, which I may or may not change. Uh, but true concealment for long war 2, we are going to continue playing with. The facility hunt job. I'm going to keep this in. We played with it last time. I think I only maybe got one facility lead from it last time. And maybe we didn't even technically get that. I, it's possible I got that from like an officer hack or a tower hack or something. I don't know. But uh, we, we did a few facilities last time. One of the leads for sure might not have been the normal way you get leads. All the other leads I'm pretty sure we got from the normal method of getting facility leads. This facility hunt job though, maybe not. No drop down lists. Uh, if you go to the uh, like the, the, the training schools and stuff like that and you click on a slot, normally there'd be a drop down list with just a bunch of names and it's pretty useless. It doesn't give you the stats of the people, it doesn't give you anything. No drop down lists, when you click on something that would give you a drop down list, instead it gives you the full screen display of the soldiers the, the way it shows in the barracks with all of their stats, their classes and everything. Uh, just much more useful in my opinion. Bladestorm Customization V2. Bladestorm, in my opinion, this this I'm using this, Bladestorm Customization V2 has a number of options, and you can make Bladestorm super OP, you can make it better, you can make it worse, you can do all kinds of things with it. In my opinion, Bladestorm should be a strong pick, and it should be, not necessarily guaranteed pick, but it should be a strong pick, and it should be on par with Close Combat Specialist. Close Combat Specialist, um, is the shotgun ability that um, gives you a reaction shot if somebody moves or acts within so many tiles of you. And obviously Bladestorm can't give you a four tile reaction the way that the shotgun does with close combat specialists, but Bladestorm should trigger, in my opinion, if an enemy moves, like, ba like base game, the stock way that it works, it will trigger if an enemy moves into a tile adjacent to you, or if they try to shoot you, like uh, attack from inside of a tile adjacent to you. It will not trigger if the enemy tries to escape a tile adjacent to you, as long as they're escaping to a tile outside of that. If they're escaping from a tile next to you to another tile next to you, then yes, it will trigger because they're moving into a tile next to you, but it will not trigger if they move out of that zone, like two tiles away from you, from next to you to away from you. I don't like that. I think that is shit. I think Bladestorm customization should abs- you should be able to run up next to a person and if they run away from you next turn, Bladestorm should abs-fucking-lutely trigger on them. That is the reason we have it in there. 
I have also modified the reaction penalty on Bladestorm slightly with uh, Bladestorm Customization V2 because it's to make up for the no four tile radius. So shotguns with close combat specialists can shoot four tiles away with a standard reaction shot with the standard reaction shot penalties. I have set up uh, Bladestorm so that um, you get uh, your reaction shot, but since you lose the four tiles of radius around you, you don't have as harsh of a penalty on the reaction shot. I mean, the, the guy is right next to you, and you're using your sword. You're a master with a freaking sword, and you're using a sword at a guy right next to you. Okay, I understand. Maybe you shouldn't have a full, normal 100% shot on him. Maybe you need to have a little bit of a penalty, but not as hard as it is on a regular reaction shot. Mod config menu just lets you set a bunch of mod options and you actually need it to run some mods because you can't really configure them by I and I for some of them. So you actually need uh, the mod config menu to make some changes to certain ones. Uh, instant loot is not gameplay changing. It's just the mod that uh, makes it so that the loot just pops up. It doesn't, like when you go over top of uh, the yellow loot squares, instead of uh, the guy crouching down and an animation playing and a pop-up coming in the middle of the screen, it just displays it in the bottom right corner in the combat log what you got. Uh, Sky Ranger lift sound fix, absolutely necessary for anybody who uh, wants to rush through the Sky Ranger without restarting their game all the time. Uh, make all items available and remove mods for Long War 2 only. This is the Long War 2 version. This is the one that gives you the little buttons that say make all items available, like in the uh, deployment screen, just to take every piece of gear off of a person who is not currently equipped. Not gameplay changing, just quality of life. Long War 2, I think you're familiar with that. It will be version 1.3. Tactical UI kill counter is the thing that in the top right corner of the screen tells you uh, how many enemies are active, how many enemies have been killed, and potentially how many enemies are remaining. I am going to continue playing with the how many enemies are remaining display, but only after the Shadow Chamber has been built. Long War 2 has nerfed the Shadow Chamber to the point where it's useless. Um, it, it, it's, it doesn't give you a display of what's on a mission anymore except on storyline missions and the storyline missions display is super inaccurate because the Long War 2 schedules are just not freaking compatible with the Shadow Chamber apparently. So even if you disabled that and you made it available on everything again, it's just inaccurate. Everything it says is not accurate. So because they have nerfed the Shadow Chamber, I've sort of, I've, 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 I've brought it back slightly by, by allowing Tactical UI Kill Counter to tell you how many enemies are on a mission after you have built the Shadow Chamber. Long War 2 Tactical Suppressors. We played with this last time. It was cool. You know, it triggered for us a few times, but we never actually played it into our strategy. Like, we never actually planned to use it very much. Like, I sure, I used Ambush a couple times, but, you know, whatever. And we never really planned for that you maintain concealment if you get the kill. And I think with the changes to stealth in version 1.3, I really want to try that. I really want to send some people in with assault rifles instead of SMGs with tactical suppressors on them and ambush pods, because it's like two dudes in the pod. I bet you we could get those kills. I bet you we could stay concealed. I bet you we can make this happen and we can make it happen together. Anyway, basically, I, I want to expand on my play with tactical suppressors this uh, campaign. So we are going to keep it. Extract corpses. I've added to this campaign. I've commented on it in the past. I have played with it in vanilla before. Basically, the way it works is you can pick up light corpses, like, you know, advent troopers, sectoids, uh, vipers, and those kinds of things. You can't pick up heavy corpses like mechs, but there's an item that you can build that says harness that allows you to harness a mech. And, uh... You can extract these corpses from any mission, basically. You don't have to have an actual, like, full full loot mission in order to get them. So if you pick up a sectoid and you run with them, you, you, you're you obviously not acting. It's like you're carrying a body. Your soldier is out of commission for the time being. Or a stun lancer, for example. That's a big one. So your soldier is out of commission for the time being because they're carrying them. Um, with, the, with the harness, they're not out of commission, but you have to use an item to do it. And you have a limited number of those charges as well. So I, I really like it. I think it. I think it just adds to the whole smash and grab mentality. Like, you know, you've got smash and grab missions now. Well, why not have extract corpses? Let's do it. Plus, there were so fucking few stun lancers, pardon my French, in the last campaign, I want extract corpses. And actually, I'm taking, I'm going overboard in my methods to counter stun lancers. And I'll talk about that in the uh, I and I config. So Long War 2, a better AWC. We are going to play with a better AWC, and I am going to play with costs associated with it. A better AWC allows you to choose what, what uh, perks your people get in the Advanced Warfare Center. 
Um, you don't get to choose them initially. They get the standard uh, random roll for them, but then you can change what they are after the fact. Uh, but changing perks costs money. I'm going to make it cost, I think, what, the default cost, I think, is 10 for a tier 1 perk. So if, if you had a squad of six dudes and you changed all of their tier 1 perks, that's 60 credits. And I think it's 50 for the tier 3 perk. So if you had six dudes changing all their perks, that's 300 supply for just six guys to change their perks in the AWC. So it will be supply prohibitive. Um, I'm not just going to be able to literally pick everybody to have lethal and everybody to have like what, what, what covert and all these amazing things just immediately. Um, it's going to be cost prohibitive. We're going to have to build people up over time. And if people get the random rolls that we want, we are not even going to do anything with that. An easier war infiltration and dark events. I, they're here. I'm not playing with them. I uh, sort of tested with them to find different config options, but infiltration is changing in Long War 1.3. I think I probably am going to tweak the infiltration values for myself a little bit afterwards, but we're not going to actually play with uh, this specific mod. And dark events. I like one feature that it added. I like. I, I don't like anything else in, in easier war dark events. I, the only feature I like is when you liberate a region, you have a chance to eliminate a dark event that's triggered. And I think maybe I might enable that one feature. So part, a, a very small portion of this mod might be coming back. But basically, an easier where dark events by default, without uh, making any config changes, makes it so that uh, permanent dark events will expire after a time. And I don't like that. I think permanent dark events should be permanent in quotation marks, but I think if you bring the fight to the aliens, like if you take it to them and you go and kick their ass and you you kick their ass out of uh, Mexico, for example, and Mexico is the place where they were developing all their armor piercing ammo for their guys, I think that dark event should go away. I kind of do. I feel like that dark event should go away. And um, they can still research it. They can build their facility to build armor piercing ammo in another place. They can research it again. That's fine. But I, I kind of like that one thing, and we might be adding that back in just for that one feature. I'm going to disable every other feature. Dark events will stay permanent, but we can kill them by liberating regions. Uh, Robo Jumper Squad Select, you have to have the uh, basic version and the Long War 2 version. It's uh, just a different squad selection screen. I really don't like the front and back squad select. I like sort of a side to side or a loop squad select better because the front and back one was just really awkward. Um, we are going to play with this and give it a try. My mouse is doing some weird shit right now. Come on, mouse. Work, damn you. Work. Why you don't want to work properly? There we go. Uh, Ice Guy's Big Long War 2 name mod. We're adding this one in. I've played with it in vanilla before. I kind of want to play with it here. It just adds a whole bunch more name, like uh, soldier names, um, soldier uh, call signs, operation names, like all kinds of shit it adds to the game. Um, so we'll just see a little bit more variety in what things are called. No full cover grabs. This is a direct hit against Vipers, and it is a major gameplay change. Vipers will not tongue grab you, or they cannot tongue grab you, if you are in full cover relative to them. They will still tongue grab you in other situations. It's just a way for me to sort of deal with the bullshit tongue grabs. Like, total bullshit. Like, we, we flash, no, we don't flashbang the Viper because then he can't tongue grab. But, like, we, we, have, we have a dude, right? behind full cover, fortified, in smoke, right? Using the actual fortify cooldown, in smoke. Tongue grab. Tongue grab is like 60-something fucking percent still. Regular shot is like 2%. Tongue grab? No. Tongue grab hits at like 60%. Rips you out. Pulls you exposed. Pulls you out of your smoke. Pulls you out of your uh, full cover. Exposes you. The entire team shoots you and kills you. I don't like that. I kind of like the idea that enemies will shoot you when you're grabbed now. They they don't do that in vanilla. I like the idea that Long War 2 sort of adds that. I think they should probably hit the Viper too if they shoot you when they're grabbed. But they should have to make that choice. Am I going to sacrifice my own Viper to kill this guy? But uh, I don't like that they can just grab you whenever they want and then shoot you. So we're, we're playing no full cover grabs. We would not play this if Vipers no longer grabbed, um, or if people no longer shot at people who were Viper grabbed, 
but because they do, and I sort of like that, we are going to play with no full cover grabs. Peak from Concealment is another gameplay change. It uh, makes stealth a little bit better. Um, if there's an enemy right down on the ground below you and you're on a roof and you move right up to the ledge on the roof, that enemy would normally see you move into that tile and you wouldn't even know it until they activated because they're below you. In this case, they will still see you if you move to an exposed tile up there. They can still see exposed tiles on roofs and stuff like that, but they can't see you if you move into cover on a roof inside of their range if they're on an elevation below you. So you, you can move freely up to the edge of the roofs all you want, up to the edges of skylights and stuff like that all you want, and not have to worry about stupid shit being below you, spotting you somehow, illogically. It also adds some extra ability to like sort of move through tiles that you shouldn't be able to move through, but we're not going to play with that in mind. If it happens, it sort of happens, because you can't disable it as far as I know. But I'm going to assume that the standard display of what we can move through is what it is, and we're never going to try to exploit that. Uh, Long War 2, View Infiltrating Squad. Uh, it shows you the actual infiltrating squad when you want to view who's on a mission. Instead of showing you you know, an entire list of everybody and seeing if they're on mission or not, and they might be on a different mission. Are they on this mission? Are they grayed out? What's the case? Uh, it just shows you who's literally on this mission. Quality of life. Show infiltrating percentage in... I don't know what its actual full title is. It's in percent, I thought it was, so I don't know why it says in percentage. Or in numbers, maybe. I don't know. Um, it is the thing that shows you the actual, like, how far you can infiltrate to, what percent the squad will be able to do. So you don't have to do the mental math on what percentage it goes to. Gotcha again! Gotcha again is a crowd favorite. They've really changed, uh, they really changed Gotcha. They've got a grade. It could show you if you're going to be in smoke. It could show you if you're going to pull somebody. It's going to show if you're going to pull an overwatch, if you're going to reveal yourselves. It could show all kinds of different things with icons on the map. Of course, also showing if you can reach objectives, if you have line of sight, if your sniper can shoot it, if you're going to be in visual range of it. Fantastic mod. I highly recommend it. Got you again. Free reload anytime. This is a mod that I used to play with in vanilla, and I didn't play with it in my initial Long War 2 campaigns because I thought, okay, I want to play it with the uh, weapon attachments balanced the way that they're supposed to be in Long War 2, like without modifying them. Um, and we'll see how it works. Free reload anytime. Basically, if you have an auto loader, you get a free reload. By default, your first reload, as many number of reloads as your auto loader can support, will be free reloads, right? Um, and you can't choose to do just a standard reload. Let's, let's say you have no ammo and you're standing and there's no enemies around and you absolutely don't need ammo immediately next turn. Like you've got a turn to spare. Well, you got to take a free reload because that's the default behavior. It replaces reload while you still have them. Free reload anytime separates it. It gives you the standard reload and the free reload if you have an auto loader. So you don't have to consume the free reload if you don't want to. I'm probably going to screw up and press the reload key, the R key, a couple times when I really want to do the free reload. So we're really going to have to look out for that. But I, I just feel like this should be standard gameplay. You should not have to use your auto loader if you don't want to use your auto loader. Um, so yeah, we're we're gonna add this in now that we're we're a few campaigns in along War two. This is actually my um, uh, sixth campaign in Long War two, and I have completed now three campaigns: one on commander and two on veteran. Um, and then I have not completed two of them. One of them failed, like one of them actually lost. And one of them, um, we we obviously uh, ended up getting that stupid bug that killed the campaign. Uh, Commander's Choice. I'm adding Commander's Choice in again. This is one of the ones that I played with in vanilla and I never played with in Long War II. Uh, basically, Commander's Choice lets you pick what class your person's going to get promoted to, what a rookie will be promoted to. I really liked in Long War that you got promoted and you got promoted to an archetype. Like you got promoted to like the soldier archetype and that soldier archetype could become a, uh, or sorry, it was the tactical archetype, right? And that tactical archetype could become an infantry or it could become a assault, right? And you got to choose, is, is this guy going to be an infantry or assault? Is your recon archetype going to become a scout or a sniper, right? Or is your um, support archetype or your uh, your utility archetype going to become an engineer 
or a support. And I really, really liked that. Uh, it, it, it was sort of like playing Arkham Horror where, you know, you hand out three investigators and you get to choose one of them kind of thing. You're not, you're not given what it is. I really liked that. Um, I thought, you know, that sucks that that's not around in Long War 2. And Commander's Choice is sort of brings some of the back. Commander's Choice goes a little further. Commander's Choice lets you pick exactly what promotion um, a rookie is going to get. You don't do it from the end mission deployment screen. You have to do it from your barracks. But uh, you, you get this guy. He looks like he's going to be a great sharpshooter. Well, guess what? He's going to be a sharpshooter. He's not going to be like a rocketeer, for example. Or I guess that would be a technical. Uh, Commander's Choice just adds that in. So now let's talk about a few I and I tweaks. I will be playing with reinforcement flares enabled again because in my opinion reinforcement flares should not be disabled. I don't know why they would be disabled. That is retarded. How are they going to know where they're dropping in without some sort of reinforcement method? And the side gates, the side gates obviously need to have some kind of like they don't just pop up out of freaking nowhere. Space distorts itself around like it just makes sense. You should be playing with, uh, well, not you. You should be playing the way you want to play because you can customize this. I should be playing, as I hit my microphone, my apologies, with reinforcement flares on. It just makes sense to me. And there's no super, super exploity gamey thing that you do because of it. The worst you can do is like Bladestorm camp them. And we've already shown that you can, hand, you, you can accomplish that even without the flares. So it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter who gives a shit we're playing with the flares. Uh, what other things are we going to play with? We are going to play it with uh, the Advanced Warfare Center perks being visible. Um, so we will know what everybody's Advanced Warfare Center stuff is ahead of time. So we, we already rolled the RNG uh, dice on it, and we can change those RNG dice by throwing money at it. But um, we are going to play with... Uh, with uh, those being available to us so that we can see what we're going to get. What other config changes are we going to make? I'm probably going to make a slight tweak to infiltration, depending on how 1.3 plays immediately, but that's not going to be very big. It's going to be tiny, tiny. Uh, we will be playing with config changes. I don't think I'm going to make any class config changes, like to change perk trees again this time. I think we'll probably play with the perk trees the way that they were intended. If we play a second campaign during 1.3's lifespan or with the same perk trees, maybe we will then. But I think I want to play the perk trees as they are first to see how they're going to be. We will be playing with grazes off. This isn't a config change, but this is an option in-game. We will be playing with grazes off. I think I have had enough of grazes. You can still get grazes. Dodge will still downgrade a regular shot to a graze. So dodge, like dodge could still result in grazes happening. But I think I want grazes off. With grazes off, you end up hitting less. You, you do hit more often and get some kind of roll with grazes on. Uh, but... Like, you know, your 29% chance is actually a 39% chance with Graze on. But in my opinion, Grazes disproportionately help the aliens. Not that they necessarily don't need help. But I mean, aliens don't... You don't shoot a Muton and not kill him in EVAC. And that Muton doesn't go back to his house and sit down on the couch with, like, you know, this bandage over his chest and his Muton wife or Muton husband, because, you know, we're not going to be discriminant here. Uh, need, needs to look after him for a little while because, or him or her for a little while because you know they're injured and all this shit and they need to be nursed back to health and they're not out for a month and a fucking half and then they, they don't come back to their job a month and a half later and you know appear in a new mission again right no that, that, that shit doesn't happen whereas an XCOM soldier gets grazed for uh, four fifths of their HP and they're out for the entire the entire month yeah, they could have gotten hit for all of their HP and died. Fine. I want those binary results. I want them. I don't want the stupid, you know, they're injured for the entire freaking month crap that happens. I want the binary results. I fucked up. This guy is dead. Or I fucked up and, you know, we got out of it because, you know, good, ro like the roles were in our favor. RN Jesus was on our side. I don't want, RN Jesus was kind of on my side, but we still got screwed because of it. I want the binary roles. I want the ones and zeros, right? And uh, we are going to be playing with Grazes off as a result. We will be playing with Red Fog off. I am not a fan of Red Fog. I feel Red Fog makes the game disproportionately easy for XCOM because you play the game going, okay, I absolutely want to take everybody out this turn. Standard, right? I don't want to take a shot on me. 
So you go in with that mentality. Well, with Red Fog, I don't really have to take them out. All I need to do is I absolutely have to do like three quarters of your health and damage. So all I need to do is hit you with a grenade and then you are not going to hit me. You, Stun Lancer is not going to reach my guys to hit him. Um, so Stun Lancer is totally dealt with in that case. Um, and your aim is going to be so poor you can't do anything. The only thing that Red Fog doesn't really affect is Grenadiers and sort of Rocketeers as well, but Grenadiers primarily. That, that's it. it. It basically shuts down everything else, and I don't like that. I feel it makes the game too easy for XCOM playing with Red Fog. You could get screwed by it too if you play with Red Fog on completely, which is what you should. I, in my opinion, you shouldn't play with um, just the aliens getting it. Uh, that, that's a little unfair. But uh, you could you could definitely um, shut down your game as well by uh, um, getting hit really hard, and now all of your all of a sudden your guy can't escape on the smash and grab or something. But I, I just don't like Red Fog. I'm not going to do it. Any other changes? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think we're going to play pretty much everything else the way it is stock. Uh, all right. I think that covers it. It's been about a half hour, been quite a while, but I just wanted to go over all the mods we're going to be playing with and the config changes that I'm going to make specifically to our first campaign in uh, Long War 2 1.3. And um, we might make more for a future campaign. We might make less. I don't know. We'll see where it lands. But uh, I have been Liz. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a little bit long. Uh, obviously, you probably didn't watch to the end here. But if you did, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, on the field. <laughs>